I would say the first thing that I always have clients do is look at their vision, you know, because I think a lot of times we get so focused on the details and people will come to me and be like, I need a new logo or I need a website. And it's, and that may be the case, but they don't really look at where they're wanting to take their business and why, and then working towards that. And that's why a lot of times I call the branding process the messy middle. A lot of people will try it multiple times or try with different people and never get the results that they want or DIY it. What's up, Style Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Style for Life. It's your girl, Katie, here. And today's episode is smooth and juicy. I'm excited for today's episode because it's with someone that I love dearly. And it's one of the people in my life who keep me grounded. I feel like sometimes the energy can get really, really big. So when I get my people around me who really, really ground me and help me slow down to speed up. Those people become super, super precious and important in my life. And I am pumped to bring one of them to you today. Tiffany Newman, brand strategist of Your Legacy Brand. If you are new around here, oh, welcome. Welcome to Style for Life podcast. This is the podcast to break down all the fashion stereotypes and all the things you thought you knew about fashion and shift your identity from fashion to style and how you can use style to feel good every single day and to build an authentic style and brand business and life that represents you and your values and your outlook on life to make everything easy, effortless, and fun. Fun is the name of the game around here. So you're in for a treat. So today, Tiffany's on the podcast. Like I said, I love Tiffany. She's just not your average branding strategist. She just brings a deep knowing. You know how they say, have you ever met someone and you've been like, that person's, this is not (laughs) this person's first time here. Like I feel that way about my son. He just like is an old soul, wiser than their years. Like they just come with a knowing. That's the energy that Tiffany brings is this quiet, visionary, knowing energy. And she makes mining the pieces of yourself that you can work into your legacy brand super, super easy. One of my favorite things about Tiffany is her ability to create really deep connections. So in today's podcast, we talk about making connections in a noisy world. I'm sure we would all agree that things feel really noisy with all the different social media apps. New ones are coming out all the time. And that's just where we're at right now in society. So I think you'll really, really enjoy today's episode on like how to create that legacy brand, how to build really deep connection, what really matters when you're focusing on your brand. And of course, my favorite topic, we go deep on how to bring that your inner essence into your outer presence. So Tiffany and I have worked together behind the scenes. I am in her networking um, mastermind community, and she is one of my personal one-on-one styling clients. So we really vibe out here and we really connect those two things for you guys on branding and style and how to incorporate all of that. And Tiffany's a genius at pulling out those pieces of yourself. And then we work really well and taking those things and bringing them out into your clothes. We've actually done this with mutual clients before. So there's a lot of gems in here that I think you guys will find super, super valuable. So message me, let me know what resonates with you. Follow Tiffany on Instagram. She just launched a new private podcast. We'll talk about that. Links are in the show notes for that. And speaking of juicy things and links in the show note, it's time to announce the Style Squad giveaway winner. So shout out to everyone who entered. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited for you guys. I'm so excited for everything that's coming up in the Style Squad. So stay tuned. Big announcement coming up in early September and save the date for September 18th through 22nd. But our big Style Squad winner, giveaway winner is Yasmin. 
I will be reaching out to you an email. Congratulations. Three free months inside the Style Squad. And let me tell you, it is the going to be the juiciest three months there. We have really fun special event coming up. And we have lots of really cool things that are happening right now in September in the Style Squad. Anyone else? who's interested, like I said, save the date. Some juicy stuff is coming. And I mean, I have to celebrate a little bit. My husband and I have been working behind the scenes super, 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 super hard on this community to refine it and make the experience amazing uh, with some outside partners as well. But he just finished wrapping up the new sales page for the Style Squad. So if you want to check it out and you want to learn more and you want to learn about all those new updates, maybe you looked at the page and you learned about Style Squad when I launched it originally, it's a total glow up. (laughs) So this is what you can expect. And yes, that's a pun for sure, right? Total glow up on the sales page, total glow up for you and your lifestyle, and just a total glow up for our brand image, for our personal style. So check it out, katiejuststyled.com backslash style squad. And I hope that you guys enjoy today's episode. I'm going to hand it off to Tiffany's interview, and I will see you on the other side. Tiffany, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. Finally, we've been um, manifesting this for a couple months now. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Super excited to be here. So pumped. Um, so instead of asking you the like introduce yourself question that everybody hates to loves to hate, let's do a little bit different. Who are your people and how do you serve them? Sure. So my people are definitely online women or people who identify as women business owners. Um, and I serve them by creating what I call a legacy brand that is my main way of serving. So I was in the corporate world, um, serving Fortune 500 brands as a creative director for years, and then took all that experience and created my own brand online, and then do the same thing for women. And they're definitely my people uh, because it's who I am. (laughs) And I also have a networking community slash mastermind. So an extension of that, but my main focus is definitely um, serving women by creating their amazing brands. Awesome. Shout out to the Legacy Lounge Collective. Woo woo. Um, I'm super excited for you to be here today. What is a legacy brand? I, but when you and I first met and we were connected, I just fell in love with the word legacy because I think words are really, really powerful. Can mm-hmm. you just deep dive on that for a second? Yeah, definitely. I'll try to be as succinct as possible. So, you know, if we think about like I worked in the corporate world, like I said, and I worked with big brands like Adidas and Burt's Bees and, you know, Levi's and things like that. And so if you think about those brands, like Levi's is a great example because they've been around forever. So I would consider them like a corporate version of a legacy brand, right? Like if you look at their logo across the years, like it may have shifted and changed. They adapt to the changing times, but they have their core essence that remains the same. And so one of the things when I came into the online world, I realized was, you know, people like playing in Canva and they like pretty things. And so, and it's not just the visuals either, which we can get to later, but people were changing their brand all the time. And so that doesn't create brand consistency, which confuses people. And that's not how you get known. So if you look at any really established and doing well business owners. That's not a great way to say it, but like people that we admire and look up to and aspire to it's they're so far ahead because they established themselves as a brand. Right. And I think so many of us are just like flying the plane as we build our businesses and kind of grabbing logos and grabbing colors and calling that a brand, which that's not even really what a brand is. And, um, and going with it. And then, you know, years later we look back and be like, Ooh, crap, I didn't really build a brand. So the whole point of the legacy brand is really looking at your vision three, five, 10 years down the road and reverse engineering it. So you have a brand that you can grow and evolve into. So you're not reinventing the wheel every couple of years. Cause a lot of times people will be like, here's my brand. And then they evolve. And then they're like, Oh, here's my brand now. And then they evolve. And then here's my brand now. So it really takes that piece out. And then of course, the last piece is legacy 
Like, I think we're all here to make an impact, especially as entrepreneurs. So leaving what is your legacy that you're going to leave? But also I like to think about like, what is the legacy that you're living now? Like, you don't have to just leave behind your legacy. You can actually live it while you're serving people, which is pretty cool. I love that. I really, really love that because I know I'm definitely someone that suffers with the when I do X, I'll be X, right? Like when I was in corporate, it's like when I hit six figures, like my life would be perfect. And then you're like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> and <then you> just <laughs> transfer that to other areas of your life. And then that's why I and I assume a lot of people start businesses is because you want different things and then it's hard to break some of those habits. So the juicy question that came up when you were talking and I don't know if this is the Gen Xer in me. I don't know if this is the corporate girl in me. Um, but I'm a huge, like, get started and you will get clarity person. And I'm a huge, like, I get the done over perfect thing. But I also have real small tolerance for, like, messy stuff. Like, mm. messy just to get things done. And when you kind of said, like, people are constantly reinventing themselves... Can we talk about that for a minute? Like, does that, ha- does, does that irritate you? Cause sometimes I'm like, yes, I, and then like online is all about being authentic and it's all about these things, which I love, which are, if anyone listening to podcasts knows that, right? Like you're getting the Katie, the real one, <laughs> but sometimes there's like, you got to put in some effort, man, just cause you have this like online business doesn't make it any less important because it's not a brick and mortar because it's not this. And because it's not that. And I think that being online has kind of made people think that everything can be slack and it's not, I don't think so. Like I said, this might be the 40 year old me being like, no, like, come on, let's try a little bit. <laughs> No, I a hundred percent agree with you. Well, it's just like you, you know, think about if you think about style, it's like how you're showing up. If you're showing up with no like thought to how you're showing up in your style every day, it's the same type of thing. And what people don't realize is often it's their brand is what's holding them back. And they think it's like, oh, the next shiny marketing technique or this or that. And it's only because they haven't built the foundation of their brand They're not super clear on their messaging. So like, and a lot of times they think the brand is just visuals, but really it's so much more. It's like the whole analogy of like, you see the iceberg and you see what's above the surface of the iceberg. You know, that's like the visuals, the logo, the colors, the fonts, whatever. But really what matters is below the surface, like your messaging, your brand story, your vision, your values, your voice, like all of those foundational pieces. And so many people skip that, don't get clear on it. And they're just throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping that it works and things will work. Like you can get fairly far ahead. Like it's not like you won't have a business without it, but I get so many people that hit a plateau some point in their business. They're like, I just can't get past it. And it's typically because they never did that work. And so they go back and rebrand and do that work. And then it's like, oh, now I have it. And that's especially when you want to scale and like grow a team. When you're used to doing it yourself, you can pivot and like make shit up as you go. (laughs) But when you have a team, you need a strategy and you need a foundation. So they, when you're steering the ship, they can follow you. And that's the actual definition of a brand, in my opinion. (laughs) No, that's juicy. One thing, can we add like your wardrobe to your brand? Number one, (laughs) one thing I hear a lot is when people shift from corporate to starting a business, like they don't know how to dress anymore. And then they go for that, like, well, I'm at home. So I'm allowed to just wear sweatpants and like build my brand. I think part of your brand strategy should be like that, right? Like if I go to corporate, guess what I get on the first day is the dress code. Like this is what I'm supposed to wear. This is the tone of the office. This is the culture of the office. And I think how we dress and all of that falls under brand to me because usually the culture of your office is part of your brands, right? Like I worked at a really casual retailer for 11 years and our office culture was casual. The way we dressed was casual because if our brand is casual and then you walk in because we had storefronts and then of course we had a, a corporate office and you walk in and everyone's wearing suits, like we can't advertise like Walmart pricing and then be showing up in their Saks Fifth Avenue suits, right? Like it it's, doesn't right. make sense. <laughs> so that was just a plug for fashion being thought of when you're working with Tiffany and you're doing your brand. <laughs> hundred percent. And I think, I think you're right. It's the other thing that people don't think about. 
Because, and like you said, coming from corporate, it's a big thing. Like I remember I was like, you know, I worked my way up in corporate pretty quickly. So I was like wearing, I was like walking into Chicago, like with a black suit on, like a weirdo, like looking back, I was like, God, that's, I probably look like such an idiot, (laughs) but it's like the way I thought I had to dress to be there, you know? And it's true. Like whether you came from corporate or not, or you started a business and you were a stay-at-home mom or whatever, like as women, it's so much part of our identity, but it's easy to have like an identity crisis. Like you come out of corporate and you're like, wait, who am I now? Like, who am I really? Or you have children and like, now you're a mom and it's like, okay, well, how am I supposed to dress now? And so it's not only how it's reflected in our brands, but you're right. Like the way we dress. And even if you're casual, cause my brand is fairly casual. Like I love both. Like I love to dress up some, but um, you know, it's fun to be somewhat casual too. And I mean, that's one of the reasons that even though I'm a brand strategist, I worked with you because it was important for me to have somebody else reflect that back to me. And that's what I always say about branding is you can't see the label from inside the bottle. So, so many people try to brand themselves and they get stuck because they can't have an objective view. So that's why I exist basically because, and why you exist for the clothing piece, because yeah, it's if it doesn't all fit together and it's not cohesive, it's going to confuse people. And it's, you just want to show up authentically as yourself and not have to worry about it. Right. And I think, um, I love when you use the word foundations because I talk about this a lot with style because one, that's how we eliminate overwhelm on a daily basis. If you know your foundations, it's so easy to put your blinders on. It's so easy to trust your own decisions and your confidence, right? Right. Going that deep and knowing your brand so well and knowing your message so well is going to give you like confidence that you can't even imagine. And I think it's really important phase in the beginning of starting your business is like, what are my values? Like, what is my messaging? What do I stand for? Because in every other piece of your business becomes so much easier. Uh, my favorite people to work with are the people who've already worked with someone like you. Because I'm like, okay, good. So we know your values. We know what colors, like, and your colors reflect your values, right? Like all this stuff is so juicy. So I want to keep us moving in that super juicy direction. You did a podcast back in like April, and it was how to create deep connections in a noisy world. I wanted to talk mm-hmm. about that a little bit um, because I think that's really important. And to me... One, I think that's something that you're really, really good at. And two, I think that what really creating a brand or personal style is really about is that essence of who you are and how to build connection. And like, I know you. So I know that those are the kind of women that you attract and the kind of women that you talk to. Um, I know that's what we do in the Legacy Lounge. It's like building deep connections and going deep. And it's funny if anyone's listening, Tiffany has a podcast like you'll go through and like, yes, it's about branding. And then like the next episode is about an uh, like an abundance meditation. Like it's deep stuff. And it's all about like getting to the core of like who you are and what you really want. So can we talk about that? Can you give us a little bit like high level what that episode or what that concept is about for you? And then I had some very specific questions we can get into. Yeah, for sure. Well, I love what you said about the connection piece. It it goes into everything. And I think that's what we're losing as a society half the a lot of the times, like with the digital. I mean, it's it's kind of goes both ways, right? We can be more connected because of technology, mm-hmm. because like you and I are here and <laughs> like talking over the internet, which is awesome. But as we all know, it also allows us to be more disconnected. And I think as business owners, especially like, I don't know about you, but well, actually I do know about you and I do know that your husband is an entrepreneur, but like a lot of us, like my husband doesn't happen to be an entrepreneur, you know? And so I don't have a lot of friends that are entrepreneurs. So it, it feels very odd to like talk about. So I love building those deep connections. I think probably for that reason. And it's just the type of person that I am, but it also goes back to like the tried and true way to build a business. It's like, yes, Posting on Instagram, all the things work, but relationships is still how business moves forward. Like I still, like I just started dabbling in ads a little bit and I, I'm on Instagram and all the things, but most, all of my business comes from referrals from other people because they love me, they love my work and they want to introduce me to other people. It's just how 
business works. And so I think so many of us forget about that. Um, and also when you are on social media and things, when you have your, your brand and like we talked about the foundations and you show up, people then can feel connected to you much quicker because it's consistent. You're being your true self. You're showing up over and over. So there's so many like different pieces to that. (laughs) Um, but yeah, connection is so big for me. So that's why, even though I'm a brand strategist and that's my main focus, I also have the legacy lounge because I, people would come through my cohorts in branding or even one-on-one and get connected to the, the other women and be like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Like, how do I stay connected? And I was like, I don't, I don't know, like talk to each other online. (laughs) So finally I did build a container, um, for that because like there was a need, you know, but I also, so then going back to style, I know you and I were talking before we started, there's so much connection in that too. Like I'm wearing a hat right now. You can't see it if you're listening, but, um, (laughs) I have a picture. (laughs) You know, but if I wore like this or like my amazing earrings or whatever to a networking event, it's a talking piece and it gives you that automatic connection for people too. So, That's where I think if you boil it down, the whole reason for like style branding and that is to cultivate those connections. Yes, I so agree. Um, I just have to say like speaking of communities and connections, and that's the truest way to build your business. My husband joked in the beginning of me starting my business because I was in a bunch of communities before. So I launched a podcast, but I was still very much in corporate and I really had no intention. Well, I had like the dream to leave, but I didn't have the trust to leave. And then, but I was already in all these communities. So when I did lose my job and I did start my business, I immediately started a business and had a client like in the same week. And then at the end of that first year, my husband was like, your friends basically crowdfunded your business for you. You know that, right? I was like, no, the communities that I was in, because I was already in communities, I didn't have the idea of the business first and then say, hey, I have this, oh, I decided to be a personal stylist. I had just did it backwards by accident, which then was a happy accident. And so I can attest to that. Like relationships are everything, everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I have chills when you were like, when you go to the networking event and I tell people all the time, like, where the thing that really is you? Cause your person's going to be lying for you. Like that happened to me at a networking event um, when a couple years ago. And then that person, when her and I just had lunch not that long ago, she like walked right up to me and she was like this, all of this. Like, I love all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like talking about my whole like person. And I was like, well, good. I'm glad. So let's be friends. <laughs> and I I love that. That. What's the significance of that with branding? How can we use our branding to build deep connections? Yeah. I think the main way is definitely like putting it out there on social media. So again, that's, we are visual creatures. And I said earlier, you know, the foundations is really where it's at, but like how you're speaking, you know, people, you're going to reject some people or like repel some people, I guess is the better word. And that's a good thing. Like they might be annoyed that I talk about, you know, a meditation or that I, they might be annoyed that um, I still t- tend to talk like a professor because I'm, I was a professor for a long time. You know, like I'm not like this super, I'm very fun, but I'm not like super cheery over the top online. And that's just me. And then there's some people who would go after like a super cheery over the top person and be like, oh my God, I can't stand that person. So just really the way that we're showing up and the colors that we pick, the, you know, color psychology is so big to think about, um, you know, like a, co- a client that we both worked with recently, I did the brand and then I referred them to you for clothing, you know, they are like the funnest, coolest women. And so I was like, we have to go with fun, bright colors. Like that's who they are. And it's the essence. And I think so many times people will pick a brand because it's, you know, it's pretty or it's what everybody else is doing or what have you, when really the whole brand should reflect your essence. Like when somebody hits your website, they should immediately get a sense of who you are and either feel super attracted, like, oh my gosh, I feel like I already know this person or be like, nope, not for me moving on. And that's fine because you don't want to work with them anyways. (laughs) 
Um, I have a question for you. So when you, I love colors. Um, so I think that's always a f- like one of the really um, most fun places to play. Do you have any fun stories around like how you picked your brand colors or how you help people pick their brand colors um, to help them really express who they are? Like if someone's listening and maybe they're going through that rebrand, nothing's wrong with evolving and rebranding. Like I know in the beginning I was like, get your life together. But what I meant was like, <laughs> just try to think of who you are now. And of course you're going to evolve. That's really the game of life, right? Is evolving. Exactly. But do you have any fun stories of like how someone can dig in to who they are, like, or examples of like, oh, this person like this. So this is how we did their color palette. Because I know when I did mine, it was really fun. And I don't know if people know that that's my, how my color palette came about, but uh, but I can tell you guys after, but I want to know your examples too. Yeah. So the one that comes to mind the most, so mine, I kept fairly neutral just because I knew my whole goal was to feature other, all the brands that we've done on the website. So I went very like, um, you know, like high style brand, black and white, you know, like really sleek. So I didn't, and I have some little like accent colors, which, um, are my favorite colors, but also like, if you look at my wall, like blue evokes trust. So I use this beautiful peacock blue. I didn't want like a Navy, which felt corporate, you know, so I could go into detail on that. But the one example that really comes to mind is I had this client, Ina, and, um, she is from Venezuela and she's like fiery and like, you know, just like super fun and out there. And you went to her website. And again, like you said, we all start somewhere. And typically I tell people not to really invest in their brand until they have done a little bit of work, unless they're coming from corporate and they know exactly what they want to do to your point earlier. But um, she had this website and it was like baby blue and pink. So it looked kind of like a nursery, like for, for like baby twins, boy and girl or something. And I was like, this is so interesting. And she's like, yeah, it's pretty, but I just don't know why it doesn't, I just don't, I never really loved it. And I was like, uh, it's, I mean, to me, it was so obvious because she's this fiery, like on point woman and all over. And we did, so everything I do also goes, like you said, very deep. So we did a lot of unpacking and coaching around it. And she realized that as a child, her parents were always telling her to settle down, calm down, be quiet, like all the things. So she felt like she had to show up in this certain way of like this calm, sweet child to be liked. Mm. So she made her brand in the way, like subconsciously, she had no idea, but once we uncovered it, she was like, Oh my God, like I didn't even realize I was doing that. So we completely scrapped all that rebranded into like black, white, red, a bright pink, like just really out there colors. And then her business blew up because then she was like, instead of being meek and quiet, she was showing up as her authentic self that you see behind the scenes. So that's like really one major, um, I mean, not everybody's like that black and white, like difference, Mm -hmm. but I think that's probably my favorite example. I love that. I, so I had to ask like, how did you uncover that? Were you guys meditating? What were you doing? (laughs) How did you get there? Um, well, a little side note. I'm also, a trained uh, master NLP coach. So I have my ways <laughs> to <laughs> to go deep and uncover things like that and like get to people's essence um, in the process, which I think makes makes my process quite a bit different too, because a lot of times we are pulling things from our subconscious and we don't realize it. So we think we're branding as ourselves, but a lot of the times we're really not. That's where the identity crisis comes in a lot of times. Um, I even did that myself, like coming out of the corporate world, being a mom and stuff. So it's, it's really interesting and fun. It's like you're branding to the mask that you think you're supposed to be. Totally. Um, Yeah. I love that story. Um, I love that you use the word essence because I think it's so powerful. And I've been using the analogy of like ambiance of like, when you go to a restaurant Mm -hmm. And think about it like that. Like, what's the ambiance? Like, what's the feeling that you want people to have? Um, my, well, my colors are black and white, too, because I wanted to feature, right, other people. But then my um, shades of pink and orange are just my favorite shades of lipstick. So that Which one. makes so much sense for you. <laughs> I know. But it's funny is when we're picking the colors, I I just, like, picked those, kind of, like, picked those colors 
And then we did the photo shoot with my lipstick spread out. And I was like, you've got to be shitting me. <laughs> I was like, I, I didn't like this big stuff. See, there we go. And I was subconscious. You just went for those colors and you're like, oh, that's why. <laughs> yeah. And my inspiration photo. And then um, like olive green, because that's a color that I know for my eyes. Right. Um, but when I pick that, mm-hmm. but the inspiration photo that I used to build my brand around was a local hotel that I love that we went to on my 40th birthday and there was just this room and it had like the black and white tiles and then it had like the magenta and the green. And I don't know if it had the orange or not. I probably threw that in there, but, um, and I was like, Oh, of course. Like if you could see that picture and you could see like my closet, you'd be like, of course, Katie makes a lot of sense. That matches. (laughs) Anyways, this has been amazing. And, um, I want to just the person that is like listening and maybe feels like they're a little stuck with their brand. What's like the one super tactical like thing that someone could do to like implement to get a quick win on um, whether it comes to their branding or making those deep connections in the noisy world? Because I really love that idea and that concept. Yeah, I would say the first thing that I always have clients do is look at their vision, you know, because I think a lot of times we get so focused on the details and people will come to me and be like, I need a new logo or I need a website. And it's, and that may be the case, but they don't really look at where they're wanting to take their business and why, and then working towards that. And again, and that's why a lot of times I call the branding process, the messy middle, a lot of people will try it multiple times or try with different people and never get the results that they want or DIY it because they get to this point in the middle where it gets confusing and they don't have, you know, they don't know which way to go. And so the very first step is to get clear on your vision and not just like your vision of where you want your business to be. I tell people to look in four quadrants of their life. Um, I had, I worked with a mentor named Mary Morrissey for like 15 years, like well before I started my business. Um, and personal development. And she always had us look at our vision in, you know, vocation, which is important as a business owner, but also um, time and money, freedom, relationships, and then um, just like personal freedom. And when you look at the whole big picture, then a lot of times your vision changes because, and your brand changes because a lot of times we're so focused and people be like, I want to be a multi seven figure business owner. Okay, cool. But is that at the detriment of like your family or your relationships or your travel time or whatever? So when you look at that whole big picture, um, that to me is really the first step of getting the clarity to then create a brand from. Um, I have a very specific question because I Sometimes I'm like, no, I want to know the specifics on this. Can you tell me specifically the difference between time, money, freedom, and personal freedom? Yeah. So time and money freedom is more like where you want to get, um, like how much you want to make, how Mm -hmm. many weeks off do you want to have? Like I specifically have at least eight weeks off a year now. And like, I never would have thought like I could completely unplug (laughs) for that long. Like last year I took a two month sabbatical and I went to Europe and it was like no big deal. Um, But that's all because like that was part of my vision. So I worked to get there and like built my brand around that Um, where your personal um, freedom is more like what you want to spend your time doing. So like, I love music festivals and I love I want to spend more time with my family and that type of thing. So to me, they're slightly different. They're very similar though. That makes sense. No, I wanted you to break it down because I think something that I find personally irritating, like an online space is people throw out words a lot. And then we just hear the word, like even the word confidence. And it's like, I've broken down the definition of that so many times because I just think we start Mm. to use words and we're like, what does that even mean? Like when people use the word Mm. shoes, plug. And I hate when people say shameless plug because there should be nothing shameful around plugging your business. So it's like, I'm just trying to get absolutely all on like words when we hear people say things over and over. So thanks for breaking it down. Um, cause I like what you said around personal freedom, because in my experience and a lot of people I hang out with, when we have personal freedom and we build these businesses and I'm so guilty of this, like I'll get some free time in my day and I'm like, I literally don't know what to do with myself. So, because I haven't 
thought about it. So what do I do? I default to like, oh, well, I could just fold those clothes or, oh, Chloe needs this or whatever. But that's not really personal freedom. That's just like filling space and time and never really like, it's almost like escapism on some level because you're not really getting to know you and what you truly like. So I would just wanted you to break it down because I think that's juicy. Yeah. Yeah. I actually um, have people that I mentor like in my coaching side and that's the first thing we do is like, how can you start building in those like personal time things? So like I have, I start my morning with like, it's usually like 10 minutes of art. So I'll either do a collage or like do a painting or something. And I never really thought I'm like, I don't have the time to do that. But like my whole day is different when I spend that little bit of time doing something that I love doing. And it's like meditation for me. Cause I'm not a great meditator. <laughs> I mean, I do it, but, um, but for me, that is meditation, you know? So like, how can you just add those pockets of time or like taking walks or whatever you like to do? <laughs> walking is one of my meditations. This is amazing, Tiffany. Uh, so since it ain't shameless, go ahead and pimp yourself out, boo. How can everybody find you? What do you have going on? Thank you. So I think the best way for people to get in touch would be to go to my website, which is pretty obvious, um, yourlegacybrand.com. And I have a quiz on there that people can take to kind of see where they're at um, in the process of branding and where they could use support. And um, I know that you have a private podcast. I also have been working on one behind the scenes. Um, So perhaps we could drop that in the show notes. Um, It's really freshly minted. I'm super excited about it. And I'm really going deep as I always do and sharing like step-by-step how you create um, a really magnetic and profitable brand, not just like a pretty brand. So they could be both. They can be pretty and profitable. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Um, I didn't know you were working on this newly minted private podcast. I love it. We would definitely share that. I can't wait to listen to it myself. I'm like, (laughs) oh, tell me more. (laughs) And your Instagram, I think you do. I think you put out very on time and thought provoking content on social media. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So I'm at Tiffany Newman Creative on IG. That's mostly where I hang out. Not so much on Facebook anymore. A little bit, but IG is where it's at. That's right. (laughs) Awesome lady. Thanks so much for being on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.